the gargantuan booster has been a blessing to SpaceX as many upgrades are made to improve flight performance and safety to accomplish Elon's intent to land NASA's astronauts on the moon and also his ambition to create the first human colony on Mars. The new Super Heavy Booster 9 development hints us that for real, SpaceX engineers properly studied the flight parameters during the last orbital launch on 20 sub th slash sub april 2023. Though Elon hinted that the test may not be a success, but at least fans will be excited, which came true, but during the flight, engineers studied the circumstances that triggered the rocket's malfunctioning, and from the parameters, it was deemed that new upgrades should be modified on the next booster prototype, the Booster 9. And it's mandatory to evaluate what significant changes has to be made on the Booster 9 rocket and how will that facilitate a successful suborbital flight. Round the globe on the next launch. Let's find out all these answers and more in today's episode of TechSpaceX. In a Twitter space discussion with author Ashley Vance, Elon Musk highlighted that SpaceX is implementing well over a thousand changes. And Elon Musk has made another prediction about the second Starship test launch. According to him, the next flight will be successful, and there will be higher chances of about 60% for the Starship to get to orbit successfully without blowing up, and that is more dependent on how well the booster is designed to do stage separation without flaws. Remember that at an altitude of at least 233 kilometers, the Starship is expected to separate from the booster to continue its journey into the deep space. That is what was expected during the last launch, but unfortunately when it was time for the booster to separate from the ship, it seems there were difficulties detaching itself from the second stage. SpaceX engineers had done a good job on this mechanism, and it is expected that this time, the booster will successfully detach itself from the Starship and do a one-flip maneuver before returning itself to the Mechazilla catcher to catch it in midair. Therefore, SpaceX has deemed it fit to add an extension to the top of the Super Heavy booster with vents that will allow super hot gas from the upper stage engines to safely flow out of the rocket structure and not just blow itself up. And here Musk admitted that this is the riskiest thing for the next flight. In this situation it will occur based on timing, that will be a timing sequence to tell the altitude where separation will occur, and at this altitude, the booster rocket will have to slow down by shutting down other outer engine except three inner engines, after which separation between booster rocket and the ship will occur. A few seconds after separation, the Starship upper stage will fire up its engine and head to deep space. The booster on the other hand will make a one flip 180 degree turn on its flight axis before firing its engines back to Earth. This process must go through lots of mathematical calculations to get it right. So yes, mathematical analysis is definitely the brain behind this process. Also, SpaceX will install two thick steel plates on top of the new layer of reinforced concrete of the orbital launch mount, with channels routed through them to allow water to flow through and shoot out the top. According to Elon Musk, think of it like a gigantic upside-down shower head. It's basically going to blast water upwards while the rocket is over the pad to counter the thrust of massive amount of heat from the booster. For the next Starship test flight, the rocket linger is expected to be integrated on the pad for a shorter period of time, reducing the chance of damage. We're actually going for overkill on the steel sandwich and the concrete, Musk said. That should leave the base of the pad in much better shape than last time. For the Starship's second test flight, SpaceX engineers has done lots of tweaking on the Raptor engines to direct hot methane-rich gas toward each engine's combustion chamber for mixing with oxygen-rich gas. The previous design was prone to leakage, where the hot gas passes through bolt holes used to attach the gas tubes to the engine. However, the most important alteration to the rocket comes to the crucial stage separation hardware. There will be a redesign of the Starship to perform hot staging. This is not the first time this method will be initiated in space rockets. It has already been used by Russian Soyuz vehicles for years, but Starship would be the first US-based rocket to adopt the design. In case you didn't really grab the meaning of hot staging, let's make it clear. In hot staging, the engines on the upper stage are turned on before the first stage separates. That means, the engine will have to start and fire while both rockets are attached before separation takes place. Engineers are adding vents to ensure exhaust can escape without damaging the vehicle, and that should lead to some reinforcement of the upper side of the booster to enhance rigidity and reduce any chances of deformity. This will add about 10% to Starship's payload capacity, which already tops 100 tons to low Earth orbit. 
Musk also hinted the idea to introduce electric thrust vector controls to replace the hydraulic steering system used during the last launch. Then there will be a cylindrical shed that will wrap around the booster's 33 Raptor engines to protect them from explosions of nearby engines, a measure intended to reduce the chance of cascading failures. One of the most noticeable areas of work at the Starbase launch site is the pouring of 1,000 cubic meters of steel-reinforced concrete underneath the launch mount, where the Starship and its Super Heavy booster will be erected before liftoff. During the last launch on April 20th, the powerful blast from the rocket's Raptor 2 engines bore some holes in the concrete below the launch mount, throwing chunks of material thousands of feet away around Starbase environment. However, now that SpaceX has upgraded the Raptor engine from Raptor 2 to Raptor 3, we are expecting much more powerful thrust, which should be about three times the thrust of the previous Raptor 2 engine. That is why SpaceX had to work on the concrete beneath the launch mount again, making it stronger to withstand Raptor 3 powerful force. SpaceX will have to run around with all these innovations and upgrade for the next six weeks to finish implementing hundreds of changes to its Super Heavy booster, its Raptor 3, the gigantic Starship upper stage, and of course, the launch mount. So guess there are lots of works to finish up here. One thing Musk didn't talk about during his Twitter space chat was the review of the Starship rocket's flight termination system, which took longer than expected to destroy the vehicle after it was initiated. The destruct system works by detonating pyrotechnic charges to split open the rocket's fuel tanks as hot flames of gases directly into the propellant and is supposed to cause a heavy explosion on the vehicle, which should make it break apart before the debris from the explosion spread around the environment. Finally, the booster will also be redesigned to have nine grid plates on the exterior faces possibly adding strength to the locking zone between the booster and the Starship upper stage. However, the Starship is prone to undergo more upgrade as flight requirement will need to be adjusted for safety of anything that will be on board without blasting off. Hence, since we speak of technology here, and the advanced one at that, nothing is impossible, and rocket scientists are always working towards discovering the next system or tactics that will be used to scale rocket flight in space. Remember that this is how the commercial airplane started. We can vividly remember in the beginning where a lot of airplanes will be crashing and crashing without mercy, but technology advanced and today, we could barely hear about plane crash in this 21th century. So, it will be in the case of the Starship, SpaceX will be trying out many things and making changes until we can boast of a well-working, safe and reliable Starship that will carry out multiple space flights in a day. So, anything is possible in the future so long as SpaceX keep being persistent to get things right without giving up. Hence, let's keep watching as SpaceX create an entire family of Starship vehicles, where some will be for cargo only, tanker only, crew only, long-term propellant storage on orbit, human lunar landing system units, interplanetary vehicles, and finally ballistic human-only intercontinental vehicles and ballistic cargo-only intercontinental units. But let's not forget too soon that for SpaceX to ferry humans through space, the Starship system will have to be modified with ejection capsules or an entire crew cabin ejection capsule capable of aborting and discharging itself from the main Starship to save humans on board. Do you think it will be possible for the booster to detach itself in midair during the next launch?